Okay, so uh, here we have our piston for the 68 RFE, and as you remember, this uh, uh, little screen filter is the one that uh, that when we try to uh, air, blow air through it uh, to uh, you know to check for restrictions, this just popped out, popped right out. Now on the Transgo kit, uh, two of these are supplied on the Transgo kit for the reverse uh, input uh, piston. I always skip that test, uh, uh, that step on the 4L60 uh, Transgo kit uh, intentionally because uh, I'm keeping all of this for uh, the 45s RFEs and the 545s and the 68s. And this is what I've been using here. And uh, we're just going to drive it in here. But this one I just positioned it in there. It is an orifice little uh, cup plug. And then we're just going to drive it in there. Alright, so we are flush. We are flush on it. And I'm going to go a little bit below flush. I'm just going to tap a little bit and just get it under flush. And I'm going to use my uh, same punch as you see here. Uh, the little uh, orifice filter was staked in place so it won't come out that's exactly what I'm gonna do to the uh, little orifice uh, little cup plug down there so I'm gonna get my punch and I'm gonna go sideways a little bit do one side and actually that that works pretty well I'm not sure if the, if the camera is kind of uh, getting in there but I'm gonna try to rotate to see if you can, guys can see this and I have already staked this uh, cup plug, so the cup plug is already staked in place. Uh, so this is actually the fix that I, I have been doing uh, with this piston. You can uh, put the new uh, filter in there. Some kits do come with it, but most of the overhaul kits do not come with this filter. Uh, the other option is just to replace the whole piston, but the little uh, screen filter, uh, uh, the a little orifice if you get a little bit of a uh, contamination friction contamination or metal contamination uh, it'll block that little hole uh, and it'll cause some issues you know you're gonna have a uh, fluid that's uh, you know not bleeding off and uh, you're gonna have uh, probably some uh, bind ups upshifts and downshifts you know uh, on the upshifts and or the downshifts all right well uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start assembling this drum uh, but I just want to show you guys, uh, you know, what I've been doing to this, uh, you know, to fix the problem on this uh, particular unit. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about this drum here for a minute. Uh, we have internal and external uh, overdrive and underdrive frictions, and uh, we have two-sided uh, reverse input frictions. It only takes two of them. So this is probably from here. And uh, let's not be confused. And the underdrive are thicker frictions than the overdrive frictions. We're going to go ahead and measure them. Uh, we're going to do uh, thousands of an inch. I know that my uh, I probably need a battery in this thing so we need to determine uh, which are the overdrive and which are the underdrive 49 thousandths of an inch are the overdrive frictions and uh, 59 thousandths of an inch are uh, the underdrive so we got 56 give or take that's the internal teeth and external teeth you want to make sure that you measure them all they are different color as well here we see 50 thousands 49 thousands but when you look in your catalog it will say 49 thousands and 59 thousands of an inch uh, depends on your on your tool if it's calibrated perfect or not uh, give or take one or two thousands of an inch on mine and of course I mean it's blinking, probably need a battery in this thing.
Also, like I mentioned, the color is different. I don't know if you, if you can tell on the camera, this is more reddish than this. This is more orange. Underdrive are a little bit more orange. Reverse looks a little bit more orange as well. So we determined that these are the overdrive frictions and uh, overdrives have one more count than the underdrive. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, and six for the overdrive. And we should have five for the underdrive. One, two, three, four, five. I know there are 10 here, but I count them as five because it's a set internal, external and internal. That's considered one friction. If you look at this, this is one friction. It's both sided, internal and it's external. Uh, there, it, this use is actually a steel. So this is this would be five and five. This is the underdrive. Six and six, it's the overdrive. Let's go ahead and put this to the side, out of the way. Here's our hub. Another tip that I will give you, run a little bit of emery cloth, you know, kind of sand it a little bit. Uh, take take away the glaze off of it and here we see the the plate here that I did the same thing ran uh, a little bit of emery cloth by hand this one I actually use a roll lock disc on the steel that's no big deal uh, and same thing here uh, emery cloth and as you remember uh, on the teardown video this one has a number one uh, but always mark them as you see here I have an X mark on this one uh, and this goes towards you so this would be this way I did not do anything on this uh, uh, side of the of this pressure plate because on the overdrive no friction is on this side and this is gonna sit right here okay alright well let's go ahead and start the assembly I have the input shaft this is the 68 RFE input shaft uh, 45 RFEs and the 545s are a little bit smaller. Uh, this is the 68 RFE. We have this uh, in here. We, we need to replace the uh, O-ring on this one. So we'll go ahead and take the O-ring out. Let's go ahead and open up our uh, little baggie here with our parts. We have our O-ring. Install the new O-ring. Get a little bit of assembly lube to lube up the O-ring. Drop this thing in here. Gotta push it with something in there. Once you get the O-ring in there, it's a little stiff to get it. this thing out of the way. I'm, I probably need to take my gloves off. I'm, there's a lot of sweat coming out of my gloves. Ah! Alright, you want to get it and bottom it out. I had to take my gloves off. I was sweating real bad. Uh, you push it in all the way down until the bottom's out. And then you get your little snap ring. Just put it in there. There we go. Snap ring's already in there. And kind of like uh, get your pick and kind of pick it up a little bit. See how it's rotating? We are against the snap ring. Okay, now we're gonna get uh, some uh, green assembly lube. And we're gonna put our uh, ceiling rings on the input shaft. I kind of uh, close them a little bit. And it's kind of hot. So I use the, uh, it's hot weather, so I use the green assembly loop to hold my parts in place. And I use my blue assembly loop to uh, lubricate our O-rings and lip seals and all that stuff. Just make sure you mold it. There we go, let's mold it. Now we put our input shaft out of the way. Let's go ahead and get our O-rings out of the bag here. Your old o-ring that out of the way
lip seal, the lip goes down. Get it in the groove. All right, and then we have a green and a red O-ring. Of course, the green is the larger one. Go ahead and install that first. Into that groove right there. Red one. Into that groove right there. Blue assembly lube. You can use the gold assembly lube as well and the red. I don't like to use the red because uh, when you put your pump in, uh, once you start the vehicle and then the assembly lube melts, you may think that it's leaking out the front or speed sensor or anything like that that's external and you use red assembly lube, you can mis be mistaken as a leak. So uh, I use blue or gold both are my uh, assembly lube of choice lip seal they're both the same the one that goes here and the one that goes here they're both the same let's go ahead and install this lip seal this is the piston we, that we just uh, fixed and an o-ring Right. Blue assembly lube all the way around. Now I like to use a paint brush for this. I mean, you can use your fingers or whatever. I've been using a paint brush for years, so it kind of makes it easier. I and mean, if you see the way I'm doing it here. Now we're gonna lubricate the outer uh surface here because this is going to go in here lubricate the splines the o-ring and this is where our uh, underdrive uh, piston is and the balance pistons are going to go and to install this you just push down it's already all the way bottomed out and then this piston, you got to lubricate it as well. This is where the green and the blue O-rings go here. The outer surface where the other uh, lip seal goes. Then you just align it. Kind of align it and then just uh, align it to the splines as well. And push down on it. Push down, turn a little bit. Then we're going to get the larger uh, snap ring and it has a taper on the inside. went all the way in. Uh, if you're not sure, get a flat screwdriver and uh, you know close them, close them in. Large screwdriver. Make sure it's all the way in. And it is. We lubricate the uh, outer portion of this, of this piston. This is where our underdrive uh, molded piston is going to go. We have our new underdrive piston and our balance pistons here, both new.
Move it up. Kind of like get it in there. Past the, uh, the on the inner. May need to use the lip seal tool. Am I gonna get it on camera? Yeah, I think so. Kind of want to keep it straight a little bit. Once the inner passes, passes through, then you can work on the uh, outer, on the outer lip or on this molded piston. You gotta use the lip seal tool. Or these comes on the Transtech kit. Let me see if I can. Yeah, I, I, I could never use one of these. I tried. It comes on every single overhaul kit. I think I got like a hundred and some of these. I keep saving them on the little box. You go around like that, and he's round. He got stuck already. I have never had luck with this thing. I try to use it. That's, I mean, you get the point. That's the way you use it. Once you know and you go all the way around and your uh, lip seal tool uh, goes all the way around like that, then you know that you can actually push the piston down. It went a little bit sideways on me. Uh, I mean, I usually work like this, so now that it's sideways, I'm going to have to work on this side. The one that's a little bit up. And it feels good. My feeler gauge still goes in there. There we go. We're all the way down. Now we're going to lubricate where the balance piston applies. And then we lubricate, lubricate the uh, the lip on the balance piston. Now I need to get my return spring to go here. Forgot about it. I haven't cleaned it, but not too dirty so we're gonna go and go ahead and install it same thing here see how it's a little sideways I mean I'm trying to show you on camera how this thing goes but you'll get you get the point you're gonna have to align it Make sure that the lip is good on it. Being a new piston, it's a little bit of a challenge to uh, slide that in there. Now on this uh, 45 RFEs and the 68 RFEs, you can get the lip in there and then go to the foot press and install the, uh, the snap ring. Kind of go sideways a little bit and I'll assembly move and sweat on the hands. It's kind of difficult. Let me try this thing a little bit one more time. Grabbing my shop towel, I got shop towel on my pocket. Kind of wipe off the uh, I'm working on this side right here. It's a little sideways, so as you see here, I'm already in. The lip is already mold it 
just has to go down a little bit. I don't want to go to my foot press and damage the lift. Alright, so we are in. We are flush. As you see here. And you want to do this before you go to the foot press uh, so you won't damage it. I, went, uh, I, uh, I didn't go to the foot press and I kind of bent the snap in a little bit. I gotta go straighten it up. Okay, I just went to, to the bias and just straighten it up a little bit. This is uh, non directional, so it doesn't matter which way, you, which way it goes, like the other one does. Start it. I'm gonna get this uh, snap ring started here. You can actually get a big socket and boom, and it'll go in there. But I'm going to go to the foot press right quick, and I'm just going to press on it a little bit, and it'll snap in place. Okay, now let's go ahead and get our uh, frictions together. As we remembered, we already have them separate. So we got the 5 and 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's our underdrive. We're gonna put our uh, pressure plate here. We're gonna put our overdrive on top. Remember this cover here. Whenever you disassemble one of this, uh, mark it. I have an X mark on this. I know this one has a number one, but not all of them have a uh, ID mark on it. This one goes next. A reverse clutch, steel, reverse clutch and then this pressure plate. Now I'm just gonna get this thing here ready on this side. I always keep my snap ring for my input shaft on the input shaft for, so I won't lose it and get it ready for assembly. Uh, we're probably gonna need to go to my uh, hole on the bench for this, but let me get my hubs in here. We go to the hole on the bench, which is right here next to me. I just gotta position the tripod so that we can be on the hole on the bench and assemble this drum right here. Okay, so I already got my hubs, my hubs here together. Already got all my bearings. We're here on the hole on my bench. Let's go ahead and install the uh, output shaft. I mean the output shaft, the input shaft. It just goes in there like that. And, uh, and then we put the snap ring here, but I usually support it like that on the bench. And there we go. Put it in the hole. We're going to get the longer hub, which is going to go first. But we, we got to paste the, uh, the bearings in place. So I'm going to use some green assembly lube. Just get it in here. The bushing's a little tight. There we go, it went, it went in. Now for those of you that are asking me what type of assembly lube, well, this is the green one. And this is the blue one. One less question we have to worry about. We start with the underdrive. Outer, inner, outer, inner, outer, and it's outer inner because of the, of, of the location of the T. Outer, inner, and we're supposed to uh, finish up with the inner. Last one, inner. Snap ring locations, it could be a little bit confusing. Uh, if you've never done one of these before, just uh, mark them. But here we have a flat one and a tapered one. The flat one goes in first. And 
And then we put our underdrive overdrive pressure plate. The tapered side goes up and the square type goes down. The square type is the one that we uh, run some emery cloth on it. We install that, but we're going to hold on there for a minute. Being a tow truck, this is what we're going to install on it. 45 RFE HD2, also fits 68 RFEs. So uh, we're going to do this uh, heavy duty two. It's a tow truck, remember? So we got to make it, make it last. Now here on the instructions, uh, we have a snap ring for it, which is this right here. 91 to 94 a thousandths of an inch flat snap ring replaces tapered and here's the location where it goes we already put the the flat snap ring that's the one we put then we put our our uh, underdrive and overdrive uh, underdrive uh, pressure plate underdrive overdrive underdrive overdrive so we're gonna get this from the shift kit and we're gonna install that snap ring in there This is our new flat snap ring that's going to go in here. And these two openings, or at least one opening, you want to try and get it like in between here and not underneath because you need to get access to it just in case you need to go back into the unit for any reason. So you can get your screwdriver behind it. make sure that it's seated completely go around I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this but here is the opening of the snap ring so I can actually get a uh, screwdriver behind it Oops screwdriver behind it and uh, get that uh, snap ring out and this replaces this tapered snap ring there's a flat side to it the flat side goes down the taper goes up if you were to reuse this snap ring this is what would go on on there next now uh, we're gonna get our uh, overdrive uh, clutch hub that's our underdrive clutch hub we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna paste uh, the bearing we're going to paste the bearing under here. Go ahead and lower it. Same application. Outer, inner, and then we end with the uh, inner. And I had to, I know, I had to take my gloves off, man. Here in Texas, it's a, uh, it's humid. I know one of you guys, David Smith, uh, he used to live here in Texas and he knows what I'm talking about. Very humid. You put your gloves on and I mean, you got sweat dripping out of it. Two more snap rings. We have a flat snap ring and we have a wavy snap ring. The wavy snap ring goes on first. Wavy snap ring goes on first. And remember, I can't uh, stress this enough. You got to mark this, man. You got to mark this. See how uh, it's, it, it's up a little bit on this side. And it's ditched in on this side. Not ditched in, but the little step, it's, uh, it's under. You got to mark these pieces whenever you disassemble them. Now we get the flat snap ring. That's the one that goes next. You push down a little bit because you have that uh, wavy snap ring kind of put in tension a little bit on it. There we go. Now we're going to get our reverse clutch hub. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to paste our bearing in here, on here. Drop it in there. We're going to do the same thing with this on here because this is going to go upside down when we put it in the in the case, you know, on assembly. So we want to make sure that it stays on there upon assembly. Lower it down. 
reverse friction, reverse feel, reverse friction, our pressure plate. You can actually get a little screwdriver and get it all the way down. You get it all the way down for uh, assembly of the snap ring. Now once you get the snap ring on here, you have to remember to pick it up like that. Otherwise, when you start the vehicle up, if you haven't done the quick learn yet, you, you're probably going to damage those frictions. And of course the last bearing goes on the opposite end. Let's go ahead and get this out of the hole. And now we're going to paste this in there, but we're going to put the assembly loop on this end now. As you saw that we put the, the assembly loop on this end on the inside where the, where the hubs go. Well this is the way it goes in there. Get it in there. There we have it. 68 RFE uh, input drum assembly and tips. So uh, keep in mind the way we assemble this drum. There's only two thicknesses on the underdrive and updrive. Don't mix them up. If you mix them up, you're going to create issues. So there we have it. Quick tips on a uh, 68 RFE. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and continue assembling that 68 RFE. And I also have that uh, teardown video for the 68. And uh, I'll probably do a uh, the installation on the shift kit as well. All right. Thanks for watching.